Hello and welcome. This is Sarah Flack, the Education Coordinator for the Child Advocacy Center of the Finger Lakes. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about self-care and socialization during a pandemic. To start with, I just want to address the issues of vicarious trauma, burnout, and compassion fatigue. With our helping professions, we tend to experience some of these uh, symptoms as we go through our daily life and we're working on all of these cases revolved around child abuse. Vicarious trauma is really a process of change that happens because you care about other people who have been hurt and it's this feeling of commitment or responsibility to help other people. It's this compelling nature that most of us in these professions have to identify people who are hurting and try in some way ease that pain and help them through the process to healing. Compassion fatigue is that actual condition where we're starting to experience some burnout and it's characterized by emotional and physical exhaustion that's leading to a diminished ability to emphasize or feel compassion for others. So it's almost like this shutdown where we, we're starting to just kind of have enough, we're feeling overwhelmed, we're feeling exhausted, maybe like what we're doing isn't as impactful as what we were hoping. And some of the effects that we're seeing on professionals during times of compassion fatigue and vicarious trauma is we're noticing that they have an increased level of anxiety, maybe some sadness or depression. People report having a difficult time falling asleep at night or staying asleep because they're constantly worried, whether it's about their clients, their patients, um, or even just their workload in general. They may actually avoid job tasks, so um, limiting their exposure, they're less likely to volunteer to take on additional things or work with additional cases. They may even be putting off meeting with or following up with clients or other aspects of their job. There's this loss of hope, like what they're doing isn't impactful um, or that they haven't been able to help solve somebody else's crisis. There could be some anger or guilt and also some numbness. This could come in a variety of ways. It could be anger and guilt about feeling that they're lacking in a certain way. Perhaps they're feeling overworked and worn out. Maybe the demands of clients or their coworkers or supervisors is mounting and they don't feel as though they're being supported in those positions. There could be some physical or mental exhaustion, intrusive thoughts of clients, and also some isolation where they're starting to withdraw from clients and coworkers, as well as family and friends. So what is self-care and why is it important? I really like this quote. Um, the best investment you can ever make is spending time taking care of yourself. And this is just um, really just saying that if you have that extra time, invest in making sure that you're well, because if you're not well, you won't be able to help other people be well. There's a similar quote that is um, along the lines of, you can't take a drink from a cup that's empty. And I really like that one also. So, um, and the importance of self-care. So what we're seeing when people are starting to experience this vicarious trauma and the, these overwhelming feelings of burnout and compassion fatigue is that their work performance is really starting to disintegrate or decline. They may start to experience more conflicts with coworkers and also conflicts with interpersonal relationships. For many people, it's hard to separate home life and work life. And so sometimes these work frustrations get brought into the home and then creates problems there with um, spouses, significant others, children, and other family members, as well as their friends. We start to see some health concerns. So not taking care of themselves in terms of proper eating and exercise habits, um, as well as their decreased sleep and their stress level can also 
trigger some physical conditions like chronic headaches, stomach aches, uh, chest pain. We also might see people turning to some negative coping skills. Um, some examples of those might be increased substance abuse, self-harm, or su suicidal ideation. So here are some strategies for self-care that you can do now during a pandemic or anytime. So what we want to really try and focus on is on maintaining a health and I apologize for the typo, a healthy work-life balance. So setting limits, um, making sure that you're putting time aside to spend either on yourself or with people you care about and love or on hobbies that you enjoy. I know for a lot of us in the helping profession, we have on-call phones and we have certain numbers and we want to be able to be reached or we might be called in at all different hours on nights and weekends. But it's really important that when you do have that time with your family or your private life that you do take advantage of that. That could mean turning off your work phone or not checking emails when you're not actually at work. Things just to help maintain boundaries. Um, other clear boundaries we can set can be about our social media and online presence, what we're posting, how we're utilizing it. I know during this pandemic, one of the big things that I found and I've talked to some coworkers about is about how often we watch the news and read reports. It's really easy to get tied up and caught into all these things and all this negative media attention and news can really start to decrease your mood and make you even more stressed. So making sure that you're only spending so much time doing that and then following up with a different activity Building a support system, this is something that we're constantly working on, whether this is support systems in our work environment with coworkers and peers or support systems around us at home in our personal lives. You know, spending time and fostering healthy relationships and building relationships that are, have the foundation of trust and support. You may also be interested in looking for some outside assistance from either a therapist or a counselor. In the helping profession, specifically dealing with um, child abuse, a lot of times we see or we hear or we read things that we can't get out of our brains afterwards. We can't unsee them or unhear them. So being able to talk to somebody who's trained in these types of vicarious trauma could be really helpful. It could be a, a safe outlet especially if you're trying to set that boundary of bringing the work life home with you. And then developing some healthy coping skills. And these could include a wide variety of things, whether this is setting aside time for exercise, um, journal, things that you enjoy like art or music. So obviously with the COVID pandemic, what we're seeing is a lot of isolation, isolation from um, people who don't live within your home. If you are an essential employee and you're still working and seeing clients or seeing patients regularly, then this might be a little different for you, but there are still plenty of things to do when you're at home and you're not supposed to be going out with friends or maybe your favorite sporting events or concerts have been canceled. Um, things that you might want to focus on are to continue healthy eating and exercise. As gyms closed, I know that a lot of people were struggling with this, but being able to utilize um, classes that are going live online through your local YMCA's or searching through YouTube for some good exercise videos that you can continue to do at home are also great alternatives. Journaling, drawing, painting, music, and other hobbies are all great ways to express yourself and your feelings. Spending time in nature can be really grounding. It can offer some peace and give you the opportunity to get some fresh air and some sunshine. And yoga and mindfulness. So just some meditation to reflect on what you're going through, process things on your own if you aren't interested in talking to a counselor or a therapist as well as recenter and refocus. So what are we all doing for socializing? 
most of us have turned really to the internet in terms of socializing and staying connected with people that we care about and have built relationships with. FaceTime, Skype, and Zoom seem to be some of the most readily accessible avenues for this. We at the CAC have been having weekly staff check-ins where we do talk about things that are related to business, but we also spend a great amount of time just checking in with our coworkers to see how they're doing and how we can better support each other. Some other things you might be interested in doing is playing some online games. There are plenty of ways to do this, whether it's through a PlayStation or an Xbox um, and playing live, or there's also websites where you can search for online games. There's online board games, card games, dice games, you name it. Virtual trips. I was just being told a story recently where class trip was canceled. But what the school district did was they set up times where they would actually tour the same locations that they would have been touring in real life. As a class, played games, had conversations. Um, a lot of schools are turning to this as well. Virtual field trips where they can travel all over the world. They can travel to museums, zoos, national parks, and learn about different areas. There are some exercise classes, whether you get on a Skype and do that with and follow along with. You could also write letters, you could form a pen pal, or even just write to extended family that out of town or that maybe you still talk to, but it could just be a little more personal to write a letter or send a special package and surprises. In your home, you could try and do a family game or movie night. I've seen some people actually doing themes. RCA, CFL, um, family, we had a birthday not that long ago and one of our coworkers really enjoys Halloween. So in this image, this is actually a picture of our staff meeting where we surprised her all dressed up in costume and um, had a really good time with our Halloween surprise Zoom meeting. So these are just some ideas um, and there are plenty more. Before I go, I just wanna leave you with this quote, um, which is, do not sacrifice yourself to help others, increase yourself to help others. Your service and caregiving is a gift that should be nurtured and preserved be intentional and diligent about doing your own self-care. <laughs>